MFD, 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 MF
I've called this my coordinate demo. I know this is quite a bit of code, but really what I'm trying to do is create a compact visualization system for both the position and sizing on any given MFD. So let's load this. Now before we go in game, I want you to remember something. The width of the MFD is one meter. I'm gonna bump up the height a little bit to add room for some text that'll become apparent in a second. So I'll make that 1.4, but the square that we're gonna be working within is one meter by one meter. So now if I play that, so you can see those lines of code generated this really simple user interface. Now, you can see here the circle is at position zero, zero, which is what we would expect. And then the circle diameter is 26. Well, to understand what this really means, we're gonna click on the screen. So I'm gonna click on the MFD and drag this circle around. So you can see as I move it around, the circle position is changing. And so let's try and center it here. And as I move it to the right, you can see the X position goes up. And if I move it all the way over, basically to the edge, it's about the edge. The edge is at 127. And then the other edge is gonna be also at negative uh, 127. And then the top, if I try to center it, about 128 and then a negative 128. So the overall width of that one meter MFD is represented by two times 128 or 256 individual, we'll call them pixels, it's not really pixels. So that means that the density of an MFD grid is 256 pixels per meter. That's really important to remember because let's say you create an MFD that's one meter by one meter, and then you add it to a different part of the craft, you size it down to a half meter by half meter, but let's say you defined the positions of all of your widgets in absolute values, then as you size that MFD down, most of those widgets aren't gonna be visible anymore because they won't be within that smaller grid. So we've got to devise a solution here that uses a more universal coordinate system. So we're gonna spend some time doing that in a second. The other thing to note, I just made this because it's cool, but you can size up the circle diameter on there and you can see really clearly when the diameter is 256, it pretty much fills this square. Now that we have a good understanding of how the default coordinate system works, let's try to create one of our own that makes a little bit more sense so that you can design MFDs that can easily be resized and even reshaped in some cases. And it's not just making them smaller, they completely reshape them. They make them more supple and symmetrical. I gotta catch a glimpse of these warlocks. Okay, so let's say we wanna define an MFD that has a pretty much universal coordinate system such that if you resize that MFD, either the width or the height, you can pretty much maintain the look and feel of your MFD. The way that I found to be most effective is by defining upfront what screen ratio you want your MFD to have. So for instance, you know, you could have your screen ratio be 16 by nine or four by three, or, you know, you could have it be taller than it is wide. And once you define that screen ratio, you can define your own ideal coordinates. Okay, so what I've created here is what I feel is a pretty good example of a universal coordinate system. Now, what I mean by that is in the example we showed before, if you were to resize that MFD from one meter by one meter down to half meter by half meter, you would only show about half of the total screen and the lines wouldn't look right. The circle would be much bigger than you wanted it to be. And what you really want to do instead is essentially scale things according to a particular screen ratio that you define. So in the example here, if you'll remember, the width of that entire MFD was one meter and the height was 1.4 meters. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, all right, I want the width to be a thousand units and the height to be 1400 units. 
And then I'm gonna define a ratio based on those two. And that's gonna be my universal ratio. What I'm looking for there is I really want my screen to resize, but hold that ratio no matter what size the MFD is. So if I make the MFD super, super, super wide, I still want it to scale to that exact ratio, but only fill up the portion of the screen that it can. Okay, Gramps, any way we could speed things up here a little bit? You know, honestly, this is really hard to describe without just showing it. So I'm gonna take this code that I've created and show you what happens when we resize the MFD. So first, you've seen the MFD with these dimensions, one meter by 1.4 meters. But the example I talked about before is let's size it down to half meter by 0.7 meters. So I've cut the entire thing in half. Now, if I were still using the previous coordinate system, then the circle would look twice as big. I told you the lines would, would look off. It just wouldn't work properly because the dimensions that I requested each of the widgets to be, many of them are actually outside of the physical limits of the screen right now because we've essentially cut the number of pixels in half. Well, with this new kind of quote, universal coordinate system, you can see here, everything scales properly. Now let's check here. You'll notice now when we move things around, they're in terms of my universal coordinate system, which is a thousand pixels wide. So 500 and 500 and negative 500. And then once I go outside the bounds up here, you can see the Y coordinate goes above 500 into the 600s. And if I go to the very top, it's around 700, right? Cause I, I defined the total height as 1400. So this is a much better way to define your MFD. Let's see what happens when we change up the screen ratio from our desired. In this particular example, let's say you were defining this MFD to be used on multiple different types of crafts. Well, you want any other user who picks this up to be able to resize it if they want um, and not necessarily have to worry about maintaining that absolutely perfect screen ratio. You want it to still show up even if it's not perfect. So in this particular case, let's say I just expand the width out. Let's say I make it really extreme. Okay, so it's super, super wide. What I want to happen is I want that MFD to look exactly the same, but just fit within a smaller screen size. So let's see what happens when I play this. Okay, so you can see it's scaled down accordingly and it basically limited the size of the MFD by the height and not the width. And so now when I move the circle around, you can see it's still maintaining that plus 500 minus 500. Now, those coordinates are not at all related to the actual size of the MFD. It's important to note those are virtual coordinates at this point. Even the boy, I get it. It's very clever. Thank you. Now we'll show the opposite example where we make it really tall, but really thin. And you'll see in this particular case, it limited to the width of the MFD instead of the height. Now, obviously this is not perfect because if somebody did this, it just doesn't look quite right, but at least it doesn't screw up all of the other ratios and it gives it the same look and feel no matter what size MFD you put it onto. So in my mind, this is a really good system for creating those universal coordinates and it grounds you because you can always think in terms of that 1000 by 1400 ratio that we defined previously. If you're going to be defining lots of different types of MFDs, having that singular coordinate system that makes sense to you is absolutely the way to go. It's worth noting too, that it doesn't have to be a large numbers like that. You could make it, you know, one by 1.4 if you wanted to, if that was more convenient for you to think in. The key is maintaining that screen ratio so that it looks the same. Okay, I'm gonna upload my universal virtual coordinate system with this example on here for anybody who wants it. Come on guys, nobody wants this. The goal of this tutorial series is to make 
the process of creating MFDs more accessible to more people in the community. So I'm really hoping this introduction to widgets and coordinate systems helps you get even better at making these MFDs and more confident in putting them on the website. Okay, that's all I've got for today. Next time, I'm gonna start diving into each of the individual widget types to get you a little bit deeper understanding of what those widgets can do and the types of properties we have available to us. As always, if you like this content, go ahead and like and subscribe. I will not. See you guys next time. Bye.